Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. And uh, it's good to be back. I'm Rick. I'm joined again by Ryan, aka Big Show. Show how you What's doing? Happening? I'm good, sir. How are you? Uh, real good, real good. How was your weekend? Weekend was excellent. Nice. Weekend was really good. Uh, did a fishing trip on the Missouri River with my son, and uh, he uh, he outfished me. He caught a uh, 27 and a 15 pound blue cat. I got an an eight pound channel cat, but it was a lot of fun. And as you can see, I got a lot of sun. Hey, nothing wrong with that. That's the mark <laughs> of a good weekend right there. Yes, sir. So, um, are you ready for this uh, NFL draft coming up? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm about as ready as I'm going to be. I don't really get too hype over the draft. I mean, some years I did, like when I knew we were going to draft a quarterback or that first year where we, you know, had the number one pick overall. But I don't really. Yeah, but really here's the thing. Excited. When you have the number one pick, that means that your squad wasn't that good the year before. Yeah, that means you sucked the year before. But see, you were expecting a kick-ass quarterback and there was yeah. nothing in that draft. So we got Eric Fisher instead. But. Not that that was a bad draft, but yeah, I, I mean, you know, talking about your. I team, mean, on a scale it, of one to it ten, it didn't work out too bad for you, huh? I said it didn't work out too bad for you. you know? No, it didn't. I mean, it did work out overall. Yeah, I'm. I for one am glad my squad isn't picking up high. As a matter of fact, we don't even pick on the first night. So, if I miss Thursday, it'll be no big deal. Who did you? Who did you trade? Oh, was that? No, yeah, was it Green, Devontae uh, Adams? Uh, yeah, Devontae Adams. So Green Bay has two picks in the first round. Gotcha. And, and they turn out to be like 22nd and 29th or something like that. So neither one of them are high up picks. So Well, the Chiefs are 49 40. and 30. So Because yeah. y'all got um, Miami's pick. Yeah, we got the 29th theirs. And I'm, I'm assuming they're going to trade up a little bit. I don't know exactly what they're going to do, but... Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Hopefully, they use it on defense and not really worry about a wide receiver. Yeah, for everybody out there uh, that's used to hearing us talk about sports, that's about all that we're going to do for sports today. So, you'll just have to get back with us next week and we'll talk about whether or not our team's picks uh, are hopeful or whether or not they suck. Draft special next week reaction. There you go. All right, so. Getting to the fun stuff on the show, uh, I, I want to talk about, I know that I had talked to you about the list of topics, but I, I want to talk about one uh, out of order off the top. Elon Musk bought Twitter. Now, I do have a Twitter account. I do. I'm hardly on it. What do you think that means for Twitter in general? And what do you think the future is going to hold for people that use the platform? I'm with you. I have a Twitter account. Um, I hardly use it. I'm on it basically so I can monitor my 15-year-old daughter. Uh, but I don't know. I am assuming that somehow in some shape or form he's going to give – uh facebook a run for its money you know who's the gentleman that runs that zuckerberg yeah zuckerberg he's going to give him you know i'm sure that's where it's leading to he's going to try to somehow some way form of competing to make it more relevant i guess there's so many social outlets that kids are on and they become fads you know like i mean i remember myspace <laughs> oh my god you know? yeah and it turned into facebook you know uh now it's tiktok you know where there's yeah, big these things you can do everything TikTok on there, so. and snapchat i, I don't yeah. have either one of those i don't mess with that stuff yeah so i mean Good, good for Elon Musk if you want to waste forty-four billion dollars, billion dollars would it be, on a social media account? More power to you. You know what though? These really, really uber rich guys, they have a knack for getting richer. So I have a feeling oh, yeah. that that forty-four billion 
not only is it a drop in the bucket for him, he's going to do something with Twitter to turn a profit. They don't just drop money like that without knowing that there's going to be a profit. Most definitely. And you know he's got money to burn. Didn't he just go to space? Yes. Yeah, and so. he's, uh, he's booked passages for people to space. People are still buying those passages. Now, wow. I don't know when they lifting off and where they going, but <laughs> now, me personally, so I don't like to fly in the, in the air. air. I don't fly right? in the air. So I ain't trying to go into space right now. <laughs> No, nah. if I wanted to go in space, I'd become an astronaut. There you go. But I do think that he is going to turn a profit, and you're right. He's going to give Facebook a run for its money. And I think that part is going to help us, the overall users, because I think that we're going to get a better user experience from both. He's going to do something with Twitter to make it, at least temporarily, the end thing. And Facebook, in true Facebook tradition, is going to try to copy or do something similar. Right. Uh, and that's going to make that platform better because, you know, Facebook is, is the old man on the block and they are, by some people's accounts, the dying platform out of all these platforms out there. Yep. I think they're going to, they're going to both try to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, you know? Yeah. Which, make it competitive like you said which hey more power to you that's why we the consumer continue to consume it that is true okay now i'm gonna talk to you about this one here uh toxic femininity you ever heard that term before <laughs> oh yeah now for people that haven't i'm going to read you the exact definition here it says here Toxic femininity is, as it is defined in context, is a term coined by male rights activists who have created an e equivalence between toxic masculinity and what they perceive as women using traditional feminine traits to get away with victimizing men. Now, the first thing I want to ask you, show, do you think that toxic femininity exists? Yes. And just by going over the definition that I read there, do you think that's a good way to describe it? <clears throat> let me, let me, let me uh, spit back what I heard the definition uh -huh. and see if we're on the same page so basically it's a woman um taking advantage of her position her femininity to um belittle masculinity is that how i'm getting it like like uh, trying to run them get away with victimizing victimizing that was the word, yes that, 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 yeah. um uh for example yeah. And I know we talked in these past few episodes, we've talked about Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith. And last week we talked about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. The yeah, Amber Heard thing example. comes to mind because um, she's one of those women that will, she'll push on him and push on him and push on him. And all he has to do is put his hands up to block it. Not trying to hit her or anything, but if she hits her hand up against him, she will cry out, oh, he hit me. He abused me. That kind of thing. And I know I'm probably like blowing it up, making it way more than no, it. You're, I'm using that as an example. Most of this is where the double-edged sword is. Um, you know, when you look at the, the comments on any post from this Johnny Depp, Amber Heard thing, mm -hmm. um, you know, anyone that says you know, yes, girl, you did what you were supposed to do, blah, 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 blah. If you flipped the, what's being said, and it's the male versus the female, and the male was treating the female that way, he would be portrayed in every negative light that could be portrayed. You know, yes, he needs to go to jail. He needs, you know, he needs counseling, all this stuff. But when a woman does that, 
she's somehow in being empowering and in this society in this day and age men like you and i if we speak out on it mm -hmm. we're wrong you know what i mean like you know we're keeping the woman down and that's not the case at all um yes but to answer your question in, in short form yes i agree that it exists and yes that definition is accurate okay so coming back around the corner on that what do you think we as a society can or at least should do to bring balance back i'm not saying we need more toxic masculinity that for sure we don't need but before this thing gets out of hand what can we do or should we do to stop this use common sense you know no different than it is is how do we stop racism you know use common sense you know that is uh, if you don't want a perfect be... answer unfortunately we live it's in a not society that is easily hurt quick to sue and demands justice for every little thing that goes wrong in their life not to mention most of the people that I mentioned in that are the kind of people that it's never their fault. It's always something or someone else. So yes, we got to get around that part. It's, you know, and I might get bashed from our millions of viewers <laughs> that, that watch the show, but, uh, you know, the me too movement is an accurate movement because there were more than multiple examples of men taking advantage of their power position yes. in a workspace towards the female mm -hmm. however the me too movement overcorrected or overreacted to said problem and now any woman can say yes that happened to me even though it didn't and I am speaking from experience from, you know, I've been a manager in a position for many years and mm -hmm. have been accused of said issues with the Me Too movement that were false and proven false in a court of law. But the fact that men, their, their reputation can be uh, just destroyed by just a simple accusation with no proof that is part of the problem as well that that also is a woman taking advantage of her feminine qualities to victimize a male in my opinion for whatever that's worth i agree with you one million percent not a hundred one million because <sighs> one agree for every follower <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I'm going to pose a question okay. to all of our followers. Everybody listening to the show, everybody, um, whether you're on YouTube watching or on one of the um, platforms just listening to the podcast, drop us a comment and let us know exactly what you think about this. Are we right? Are we wrong? And if, if you disagree with us, not only tell us that you disagree with us, but tell us where we are wrong and what you think could be done to correct this. You know, because I'm one of those people that, how does that saying go? Don't just tell somebody that they're wrong. Show them how to get the right answer. Right. And I don't honestly think that there's, it, to this particular question, that there is a right or a wrong answer. You know, yeah. in my, I, I don't think there's, it, there's so many gray areas that it's not black and white. And, and it um, would be based on each individual experience. Exactly. And each individual action and what led up to said actions. Like, you know, I, I don't condone violence in any form, you know, men to women, women to men, um, especially men to women and you know said relationships you know i.e uh physical abuse um that type of thing 
I train women and men to defend themselves against any attack. However, if a woman was attacking me with a knife or a bat or something like that, I'm going to defend myself to the point of de-escalating the issue. If that means, you know, sweeping the leg and throwing her down on her back and taking the bat, so be it. That doesn't mean that I'm going to continue to beat her ass with the bat. You know, there is, there is a stopping point, but the whole, you know, just let a, cause women will take advantage of this cause men are trained. Don't hit a female, you know, um, you know, they'll continue to just push, 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 and push. And then when the man has finally broke and he reacts, then he's the monster. Right. Which I think in the Johnny Depp, you know, situation, that's kind of, that's kind of how I'm reading it. Yeah, that's kind of how I'm reading it, too. I mean, you're right. There, there's no right or there's no good way to uh, handle this. And collectively, anyway, everything has to be based on its own individual situation. And, you know, like and I like was you saying said- last week, I really, really believe that with all the evidence that we hear mounting up against Amber Heard in this Johnny Depp situation, that even in the end, because of the court of a pub, the court of a public opinion, for our English-speaking audience, the court of public op- opinion, Johnny Depp is screwed, no matter what. From here on out, yeah, he from could win. He could get that money from her. He is screwed. And, and that's and, and and honestly, that goes back to what I was saying a while ago. Any male, no matter if you're you're in the public eye or not, once that one accusation is sent to you, your reputation is tarnished forever and it, it won't come back. There's always going to be somebody going, man, I bet you that's true, you know, whether it is or not, you know? Yeah. It, it's sad. Um... <sighs> but if I that's quote, the world if we I live quote in. Rodney I don't King, why see... can't we just get along? that's the world we live in and i don't see it changing unfortunately speaking of things that are changing um why is it that america is no longer talking about the pandemic i mean i just heard that uh the vice president uh has COVID 19 but do you notice how you don't hear as much about covid in, on the news now as you did um a year ago or even so six months ago i mean covid ain't went nowhere no different than the the flu it hasn't gone nowhere uh co- you know short answer fewer people are getting tested um yeah yeah that's that's that would be the reason why i don't think like you see de-escalated numbers and like i know i live you know in the wyandotte county area and they just lifted the mask mandate you know in the school system you know Mm -hmm. uh starting i think it started this week um you know it's now an option you don't have to wear it um but i think it, it just boils down to it's the summertime springtime leading in the summer people want to have get togethers so they're not going to go out and um, be as cautious, I would say, as you would in the winter months. And I also think that the actual COVID, just like the flu, is going to hit you more when it's a cooler month, you know, like the the fall and the winter. So that's why everything escalates then. So you think it's going to ramp up? Uh, once oh, yeah. I mean, if you follow, if you look at the stats the last, I mean, since the pandemic hit, you know, last year, spring, summer, you know, the the COVID talk dwindled. And then, bam, here we are going into fall and, and uh, winter. And now we have another mass mandate again, you know. Mm. Um, and I think also what helps is more people are getting vaccinated, you know, for whatever that's worth, whether you believe in it or not. And I think that um, that's also part of it. Plus, there... 
they don't need to dis- the news doesn't need to distract you with something else right now when they start yep. talking about COVID again you know something else big's happening and they want to take your take you away from it ain't that the truth all right now, now hopefully that part stays in this, the deal and they don't you know delete it or leave it out I, I will say this too um as far as uh vice president harris uh contracting virus uh prayers out to her and uh any family members that she's been in contact with that you know it's mild and that she gets better soon and anybody out there who's currently suffering from it prayers out to them as well um i've never got it amazingly enough i've as much as i'm around my kid and my wife who both have had it I've never got it. So, you know, I'm lucky and blessed at the same time. So I don't know what it's like, but from everybody that's told me, it's not something you really want to mess around with. Yep, same here. Um, I'm with you. Been blessed, haven't got it either. So um, let's continue to do and, what I do and, and take myself I as did, best I can. I did get vaccinated because just because I haven't got it, doesn't mean that I don't want to, you know, get it and pass it on to somebody else. You exactly. Know, I'm, I'm being responsible. Exactly. All right. Let me get off my soapbox. Let's get back to some more fun stuff here. All right. I love Star Wars. You love Star Wars. Not this much. Not this much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This story kills me. Um, a family of three. Three. Hmm. They spent six thousand five hundred and fifty dollars for a two night stay on Disney's Star Wars Galactic Cruiser. All right. I'm going to go over the basics on this story. I'm not going to bore you to death with the whole thing. But after I read it and I'm going to read it again to you and everybody out there, I want somebody to tell me. Where the six thousand five hundred fifty dollars? That's what I want to know. All Did right. they get a part in one of the next movies or series coming up? I mean, is that part of it? Are they like an extra on the Mandalorian? I, I didn't read that in there. Um, <laughs> it says that uh, okay, technically they spent six thousand five hundred fifty nine dollars and eighteen cents, including trip insurance. Yay. Um, Let me go to the next page here. I'm trying to flip pages at the same time I'm trying to read. All right, for people that don't know, it's the Star Cruiser. It's a hotel on Disney's immersive experience that uh, is best described as a combination of a hotel, dinner theater, and choose your own adventure escape room. Um, And although it's not necessary, you'll get more out of it if you choose to play along as part of the story. So I think that's about as close as you're gonna get to being in one of the movies now here's what the two night quote unquote voyage was like it says our our adventure began a little before 1 p.m on the first day um they got to dress up in their quote unquote galactic vest by the way um the star wars outfits that they wore they had already had they purchased themselves so that's another fee right there um they get in bands when they get on the ship they're plastic bands that are used throughout disney world and connect guests with other data using simple taps so the man is tracking you while you're in there anyway they got data pads a program with disney's play app to receive communications for missions from cast members and what disney calls which is what disney calls as employees they were taken to the launch pod that brought them from the Star Cruiser port to the uh, Halcyon itself. And that's the immersive experience that they, uh, once they step inside, they dock. It it looks like a big ship or whatever. And on the bridge, you can see all the operations. Uh, There's a lounge in there. They call it the Sublight Lounge. There's a bar that serves Star Wars themed drinks. I'm sorry, I can just get blue food coloring and put it in my milk, but that's, um, let me keep going. Uh, <laughs> cast members will escort you to your room and your room is based on um, images from Star Wars themes and, and Star Wars sets and you have a big touch screen panel on your room 
it's like an artificial intelligent assistant. And theirs was called D309. And she would answer questions about the ship. And she was a reliable source for information once the story got underway. When they launched, they uh, headed back to the dining room. And that's where they got a buffet style meal with small portions. There's the first problem right there, small portions of each selection available. And it had generally familiar foods with unique names that were presented in uh, unusual ways, such as chicken nuggets and macaroni uh, dipped in cheese. And they called it uh, dip, tip, yip, chicken with noodle cheese, whatever. So hmm. there's another problem, macaroni and cheese and some uh, chicken nuggets. For $6,559, y'all, unlimited drinks included the iconic blue milk and green milk. The milk drinks were plant-based. They didn't lost me again. Um, where one cup usually costs around $8. I could get two gallons of milk and have some change. $8? For $8 for a cup of blue for milk. For a glass. Now, this is above $65.50? No, they said that's what the comparison price is if you bought it at Disney Disneyland itself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, after exploring the ship a bit more, we headed to the atrium and uh, the first event listed on our data pad, and they went through their story or whatever their story was. They called it a mission. And then they continued the rest of the afternoon and evening through the bridge, training for the mission, getting ready to operate their lightsaber training and learning about the weapons. And then dinner was served in the Crown of Karelia dining room. And their meal was a more formal sit down dinner. And there was a live show by the Galactus, by the Galactic famous singer Gaia. Don't know who that is, but okay. It shows a picture here of their dining room, and it says overall our stay in the Galactic Star Cruiser was well worth it. It was expensive stay, but the attention to detail made it seem like we were living in the Star Wars universe. Uh, admission to Hollywood Studios preferred access to rides in Galaxy's Edge and unlimited gourmet food added to the value of the trip. Um, additionally, the service was impeccable. We felt like VIP guests throughout our visit. We are glad we booked our stay and even may consider a return trip. What the hell, man? Um, okay, I, I like some of the things that they're talking about on this, but I'm gonna be real honest here. I couldn't even see paying half of what they paid for this thing. Now, you said they got access to all the rides as well? Yes. Not Disneyland, though. It says access to uh, everything in Galaxy's Edge, the Star Wars part of Disneyland. Okay. <clears throat> Which I'm assuming they have Di or Star Wars themed rides and things like that. What is I think they have three or four, and it's based on whether you go to the California resort or the Florida one. Gotcha. Man. You lost me at chicken nuggets and macaroni and cheese. Yeah, I, I would be insulted if I dropped seven grand down and all you want to give me some chicken nuggets. I understand that they had a more formal sit-down dinner, my, but my breakfast, lunch, and dinner better be gourmet. You know? Yeah, I mean, it broke down. You said it's a couple of three. It's $1,092 roughly per day per guest. That's what it cost them. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, no. So we'll say we'll say what, eleven $1 hundred dollars. Yeah, easily. 1100 A day. Man. And, and, and I mean, I how guess, much, I guess how much is, does, I, that does that include airfare? It did not say. Hmm. I, mean, I don't know if that's part it, of the price. I bet it didn't. I mean, how much is how much is a regular ticket to go to Disney World? I mean, I've, I've never been. They've gotten so much higher since 
I've been there. It's been so many years. But I will tell you that you will easily drop several hundred dollars for just one of the theme parks in one day at uh, Disney. I think it's I think it's like a hundred and fifty dollars to get in. Now, don't quote me on this. One hundred and fifty to get in, and then paying for all the anonymities themselves. That's a whole different thing. As a matter of fact. I'm going to look it up right now and I can yeah, tell you that's what the I was going prices for Disneyland. That's what I was looking up to. Um, $109 per ticket uh, on a value ticket. So it, it can go higher than that for, but they start at a hundred bucks. So let's say I went into Disneyland, yeah. dropped a hundred bucks, and I had five hundred dollars to spend. That leaves me four hundred to do whatever else I want to do in Disneyland, including go to Galaxy's Edge, do all that Star Wars stuff without staying in the hotel. I'll stay at the Holiday Inn down the road and save myself five thousand four hundred dollars. You feel me? Yeah, but you're not going to get the the artificial intelligent robot to tell you about the ship there at Holiday Inn. You're just going to have, you know, some guy named Dave telling you about their pool <laughs> on the third floor. I mean, you know, you pay for that as well. I'm ghetto. I will tape my <laughs> iPad to the wall and have Siri tell me where we at. Oh, yeah. No, that's that's a lot. I'm, I'm betting, though, that 65... Ha- had to do with travel too i bet you because normally when you get a uh a, some sort of package that that's airfares where i don't know but yeah. still that's a lot of money i wouldn't drop it no well and were they the only people there that's what i want to know how many people were there yeah see for that at 1100 a day how many people were there i don't just want somebody at the uh desk i want full-on valet service Right. I don't even want to, I don't want to have to cut my meat. I want them to cut it and feed me for that type of money, you know, hey. uh, but I don't want chicken nuggets. I want some like emu nuggets or something. I, I don't want, I want something that's out there. I don't want something I can go down to McDonald's and get. Exactly. That's, whew, that's, that's, a, that's a bit much for me. Uh, and, and keep in mind, it's a two night stay. Two night stay. That's it. Yeah. That doesn't make it any better, but hey, teach. That's why we love this country. You can do crap like that. Hey, if you got I mean, that, if you got that kind of bread and you want to do something like that, more power to you. I say, I'm telling you, if, if I had that type of bread, I would do it. I don't have that type of bread, so I'm not. That's what I'm gonna say. I don't have it. So, oh man, so. And that's right. just to go to Galaxy's Edge. What if you want to go to the galaxy itself? How much is that going to cost? Oh, don't don't raise that question. Somebody from Disney is <laughs> probably listening. They're like, hmm, he's got an idea. Let's take him further into the galaxy. Well, he if you're going to take my idea, $10, I need to be paid for it so I can come to the galaxy's edge. There you go. <laughs> Y'all heard it here. You cut that check for show. That's cut right. That check. All right, so... We already know that we're two cheap bastards, and we're, <laughs> we're not going. To... Hey, that's the name of the podcast. <laughs> you never know; it might be in the two running. Two cheap bastards. There you go. There you go. Um, let's find out the kind of people we are, or specifically, All right. everybody that's been through the first hundred episodes. They know more about me, you know, probably more than they want to know anyway. But. <laughs> Ryan, because you're still relatively new to the show, we want to learn some more about you. Um, first thing we're going to do is delve into the mind of Big Show. Uh-oh. It's going to be a short trip. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to hit you with five questions, five riddles. And I want to see five riddles if you've got the answer to said riddles. All right, okay. here's the first one. 
what four letter word can be written forward, backward, or upside down and still be read from left to right? What four letter word can be written forward, backward, upside down, and still be read left to right? Yes, sir. How much time do I got? Is there like a Jeopardy bell that's going to happen or something? I, I'll give you up to 30 seconds per answer. I mean, do I have time to look it up on my iPhone to get the no, answer? No, you, you do not have time to look it up on me. Uh, you're gonna, I don't know. No, no. Noon. You were close. Noon. Okay. No matter how you turn it, tip it, it's still N-O-O-N. So there you go. Hey, I had the right letters. Yes, you did. So you were on the way. So this is proving right now that even if show doesn't have the answers, he's on the right path. There you go. Number two, there are three doctors and they all say Robert is their brother. But Robert says he has no brothers. Who's lying? There are three doctors that all say Robert is their brother. But Robert says he has no brothers. Robert says there is no brothers. Who's lying? That would be... Well, I'm assuming that the doctors are going to be Robert's sisters. Bam. Right there. You got it. No one is lying. Robert has three sisters. Therefore, he has no brothers. There you go. All right. Look at that. That's just critical people. thinking. That's all that is. Pretty much. Um, and here's the next one. You hold me in your left hand, but not your right. What am I? Man, this is a PG show. I can't answer that question. <laughs> now, this is something that you can never hold in your right hand. You can only hold this in your left hand. Man, I do not have to give me the answer to that one. Your right elbow or hand. It's the one body part that your right hand cannot hold. Oh, okay. Fair enough. See, I, I kept it PG, bro. There you go. All right, continuing on. Ask me this. I mean, tell me this. How can you physically stand behind your father while he is standing behind you? While he is physically standing behind? We're both standing behind yeah. each other How can physically? you physically stand behind your father while he's standing behind you? I don't think you physically can, can you? Yes. Here's the answer. You and your father are standing back to back. Ha. Okay. Fair enough. I stumped big show. You I did. <laughs> hey, but it doesn't take much, so don't get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Last one. Last one. Okay. Mississippi has four S's and four eyes can you spell that without using s or i oh without spelling that. Oh, 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 oh well all the other stuff we used to say when we're trying to do it if you said peas it'd be different i'm gonna help without you out saying, Read again mississippi has four s's and four eyes. Can you spell that without using S or I? You got to key in on what I said. One more time. Mississippi has four S's and four I's. Can you spell that without using S or I? Yes. <clears throat> Ready? 
Yes. T H A T. Thank you. I was hoping you. Yeah. Would <laughs> <laughs> there you go, folks. Feel free to use those riddles on anybody at home. I have no problem with it. If you do get paid for it, then send me a check. <laughs> All right, bro. Um, because we are still in the mind of Big Show, uh -oh. uh, I want to do a thing called this or that so okay. that the folks at home or listening in your car, wherever you're at, they can learn a little bit more about you. So I got 10 this or that questions for you. And not only do I want you to pick one or the other, but I want you to explain to me why you picked the one you did so that listeners to this podcast can know a little bit more about my co-host. All right. Number one, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Um, I like the way it burns. Okay. So Plus, any soda... That Ryan likes the paint, y'all. Ryan likes That's the paint. That's right. That's right. Why do you think I've been married so long? I, uh, but any soda that was originally made with a drug, you got to you got to stick with it. He's not wrong, folks. He's not wrong. They had something right in the original recipe. I'm just saying. Number two, dog or cat. Uh, if I had to choose one dog, cats, I'm allergic to. Ah, oh, I did not know that. That is interesting. Plus, you know, cats are just sneaky suckers, boy. I will say you this know. because I have a cat. You're not wrong there. Um, they are he'll sneaky. He'll be somewhere they... one minute and then he'll be somewhere completely different the next. I'm like, where did you come from? Right. And the relationship between an owner and a dog never changes. The dog is the pet. The owner is the boss. Well, the cat, the cat always thinks it's the boss. Yes. <laughs> that is so true. All right. Number three, iOS or Android? I'm an Apple guy. Never had an Android. Don't know nothing about it. So I just stick with what I know. I'm the same. Um, now, that's as far as the phone and the pad they're both apple my computer my laptop it is just a uh, hp windows pc um i will not use a macbook i'm just yeah same windows. here don't use mac either all right cake or pie Man, i'm a fat dude i want both <laughs> but if you had to pick one you can't make me choose that's like asking me which kid I love the best. I can answer that more than I can answer cake or pie, I'm telling you. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, if I had to choose one, probably, uh, I, I'd probably go pie, apple pie, my favorite. You know which one I picked when I first heard this? What's that? Cheesecake. It's called a cake, but it's but pie. This is true. See, See, that's I'm a nice loophole. I like the way you think. I like your attitude. I like that. I do what I can. I do what I can. Keeping with the food thing, burger or taco? Keep in mind, we're recording on a Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. Right. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm a burger guy. I mean, I don't mind tacos, but I'm a burger guy. That's what I select to do because you can also make a taco burger. True, but you can't put a taco on the grill. No, not unless you want all your stuff falling down into the fire. Right, and you don't smoke a taco. <laughs> no. At least I don't. I've never tried it. Yeah, if anybody's tried that at home, leave us a comment. Let us know. I want to hear how that turned out. And I want the recipe. Right? <laughs> or at least I want to attempt to do it. Exactly. Here's an interesting one. Red or blue? Of course, red. KC Chiefs. Then when it's basketball season, blue. Rock Chalk Jayhawk. You know what? I'm 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 not a Chiefs fan. It's no secret to everybody on the show. I did, however, it, it was tough because 
uh, my my logos and all my business stuff. Red is in the um, is in the colors of all of them. It's it's a, a bright bold color that sticks out, and that's why I would choose it. Um, growing up, I preferred blue, but you know, given the choice, I mean, black I like both colors almost equally. But yeah. like, if you look at it and go, I'll just ask you, what's your favorite car? Your dream car? What would it be? Ferrari, and they don't make them hey, in blue. You, would you rather have it in red or blue? I mean, that's kind of how want I that would mug in red. If, if exactly. I had, if, yeah, I mean, there it is. So. All right, save or spend? Save. Till a certain that? age. Till a certain age. And then spend. That would make sense. Um, oceans or mountains? Ooh. Now, I've only seen the ocean once. And that was last year. Really? Been to the mountains a lot. And I love the mountains. I'm an outdoors kind of guy. I would probably, if I hadn't, I mean, you're obviously holding my feet to the fire. I would probably say mountains. Uh, but if I got stuck near an ocean, I wouldn't complain. There you go. My logic was mountains because after you see an endless supply of water, it's going to pretty much look the same. Yeah, but that that tide is so soothing. It is. I mean, if if you're on the beach, if you're out in the ocean and you look front of you and behind you and to the left and to the right and all you see is water, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a little different. kind of old. Yeah, I mean, but when you're, when especially you're if you're mountains, in the ocean. Yes. And when you're in those mountains, you can turn any different way you want to, and the view is different. True. Either place, you're not going to see a predator coming, so you're good. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Speaking of, horror movie or comedy? Define horror movie. Are we talking gory, or are we just talking about, like, Friday the 13th? You know, they didn't put this down for any specific thing, so it doesn't have to be a slasher movie. It could be a traditional horror movie. I don't mind, quote unquote, scary movies. I just don't like all the gore, you know. Yeah. It just doesn't turn me on. And comedies, com I always want to laugh. So I guess I'll choose comedy on this one versus horror. Now, as a filmmaker, this is the one that I couldn't pick. Because... I like both. I hope that one day do both, you know? So I, I wouldn't pick. Now, hey, a comedic horror movie. There you go. A scary movie four. There you go. <laughs> All right. Now, rounding out, beer or wine? Neither. Really? I don't drink. I don't drink. Okay. That makes sense then. Because I was going to ask, why, why not pick one? Yeah, I don't, I don't drink. Uh, I mean, I have, don't get me wrong. I mean, there are some serious stories that you and I could tell about the parties that we used to frequent, but that's a whole nother show, boys and girls. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I try not to partake in the alcohol. It's just, I can have enough fun without getting buzzed. Yeah, I, I feel you on that. Um, believe it or not, I've only been drunk a couple of times you know, like drunk, drunk, obviously mm -hmm. buzzed several times, and, but to the point where I, you know, can't or shouldn't drive just two times. I mean, it's something about me. I, I don't mind drinking, sipping on something, but I have to be in control. I do not yes. like not being in control. So exactly. Yeah. And I don't want to put myself in any kind of position where I can do something stupid and create a lifetime of problems because of it. So, yeah, I, I, I'd totally rather not take that. it to the edge. Totally agree. All right. So we've now, if you said like sweet tea or unsweetened tea, now there's, you know, obviously sweet tea. Well, since you, okay, I was going to say, <laughs> open it up. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
for obvious reasons. The word sweet. Right. I mean, you know, I want to taste it. Exactly. You know, unsweet tea to me is just brown water. That that's all. It now, is. if you add a little bit of lemon or things, if you have to add stuff to make it taste better, then you know, obviously, it's not good plain. But yeah. Kind of like coffee. I don't drink my coffee. I put a little creamer in it, make it taste a little bit better. So, so you you put a little creamer in your coffee. Um, mm -hmm. Now, Heather, I don't drink coffee, so I have to use Heather as an example. She puts a lot of creamer in there. I, and I do joke with her about, you know, you want some coffee with that creamer. I mean, I mean, what I call a little bit, somebody might call a lot. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I, 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 you don't drink coffee at all. I, I do not. I haven't drunk coffee since I was, I'm going to say 1920, maybe 21, somewhere in there. Oh, yeah, I, I would, I would have been 19. No, not, not since, since 1920. I'm like, you're not that old. No, man. <laughs> since the age of 19 or 20 <laughs> that, uh, yeah, or, or the age of 21, I worked at a place called H and H color lab out uh -huh. in Raytown and I was working some serious overnight shifts putting in a lot of hours and one day I just like OD straight OD on coffee I mean oh really do you remember the old cartoons Beavis and Butthead when he had too much sugar yep I was that guy <laughs> hey I got this for you want this for me take this <laughs> you know, so <laughs> At that point, I knew I had a problem. I had to slow down. It did help that a few years later, uh, on a trip to Colorado, me and a, a, a girlfriend I was with at the time, I, I killed a 24-pack of Pepsi in, you know, one day by myself. When you're having Pepsi with your breakfast, you've got a problem. That's coffee. That's coffee. <laughs> I mean, you're just going for that's just caffeine. carbonated coffee. That's all Pretty that much. is. Pretty much. You're going for the caffeine. Now, like, I, uh, I'm i not just like your typical, you know, Folgers in your cup type of coffee. I mean, I'm bougie when it comes to coffee. Don't get me wrong. I mean, because me and my wife, we, we get Guatemalan coffee sent to us from a friend in Guatemala. So we get the, the beans fresh from there. And then, like, when we were in Hawaii last year, we brought some back and uh, you know, wherever we go, where it's, it's, it's not the norm, you know, we like that. And she goes down here to the rotisserie in Kansas city and they've got really good coffee as well. They're off yeah, uh, Southwest I mean, Boulevard, I believe somewhere around here. It's, it's been forever since I've had coffee. Still like the smell of coffee, that fresh cup in the morning smell, but I've, I've got no need to drink it. Man, if Even I don't have it, a winter when it's cold outside, I will drink a cup of hot chocolate. Yeah, and I mean, just just pour the coffee down my gullet. will be great. <laughs> hey, well, there it is. We got to learn a lot more about Big Show today, gang. And that's always a win. So now, folks, you know what two crazy people you're dealing with every week <laughs> when you watch this show. Yes, sir. Hey. All right, before we uh, wrap it up, you got anything before we go out? Nope. This is, uh, I think, uh, no, not, not an extra, nothing special. Just the same thing I always say, love on each other. Tomorrow's not promise. Hey, that's a good way to look at it. I do have one thing for all the listeners. I know I keep putting everything on the listeners. Do this, say that, do this. Uh, we will take donations if you want to send us on the Disney Galactic Cruise. Get damn skippy, and we will get a detailed <laughs> report on if you should uh, go as well. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll, I'll put it on social media. Whoa, we'll, we'll, that's right. We'll YouTube hey, it and everything. Elon Musk, if you're listening out there, <laughs> send me, send me, and I'll report it on Twitter. Every hour on the hour. I don't care how much sleep I don't get. I will go back to coffee. Yes, sir. All right, gang, that's all the time we have for today. We really appreciate you guys listening in. Uh, if you're on YouTube, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, if you got anything that you want us to uh, talk about, leave us a comment on that as well. Big Show, another good one. Appreciate you. We'll see you next week on the Two Crazy Bastards podcast. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, everybody, stay positive, stay blessed.